Alright, hello guys, how's it going? In today's video we're going to be talking once more about the tropics, where now we have three potential upcoming tropical cyclones. A couple days ago it was two, now it's three. Now before I get started with this video though, I would ask that you do subscribe if you do like weather related content, and also make sure to share this video with your friends, family, and social media. I'd also ask that you check out our very exciting Patreon page in the description in the pinned comment down below, that's also where you can find our very exciting Discord server and Facebook groups in the same location. All right, now for today's comment of the day, I want to know, out of these three systems, well, there's actually four, but the three have the main chance of development, but if you want to pick the fourth one, go for it. Which one of these storms has the best chance to become our next tropical storm? Let me know in the comments down below, and I'll be picking one of those for tomorrow's video. Let's get into this video, and we're taking a look at the two-day graphical tropical weather outlook. And as you can see, we have two areas of 70% chance of development, and then two areas of 0% chance of development. Now, the wild card here is that these 0% chance areas have higher percent chance than zero within the next five days. So let's go ahead and move on to the next five days. As you can see, obviously our red ones stay red and our yellow ones stay yellow. But what we're going to do is we're actually going to go down the list and just take a look at each of these systems individually. Take a look at the percent chance. And then we're going to move on and get into some model guidance. Now we're starting things out with this system just offshore of Africa, and as you can see, it has a 30% chance of development over the next five days, so that goes up by 30% to 30% from 0%. Let's take a look at our second system here, or actually our fourth out of all four, and it only has a 10% chance over the next five days. So this front one here offshore of Africa seems to have the least chance out of all of them, but we'll have to wait and see what that one does. Let's move on and take a look at our southern Caribbean one. And as you can see, it has an 80% chance of development over the next five days. So pretty high, to say the least, that we will at least see a tropical depression or a tropical storm out of disturbance number one. All right, and then here, last but not least, is our disturbance number two. And it has a 70% chance of development within the next five days. So we have two that have a relatively high chance and two that have a relatively low chance. Now, I'm going to be curious to see if a lot of people pick the Africa ones or if they mostly pick these ones closer to... Uh, the Americas, because these ones seem to have the higher percent chance of development, but obviously the Africa ones have high potential because they're very early on in their track. They're way back there and they have a long way to go. All right, now what we're going to do is we're going to move on and we're going to take a look at the satellite imagery for one of our invests, our Invest 90L, which is the one on the East Coast. Uh, so we're going to take a look at the satellite imagery, the spaghetti models, and then the intensity guidance, and then we're going to do the same thing for 99L. And then we're going to start talking about the overall hurricane season. All right, now here we are taking a look at, again, uh, what is 90L, invest 90L. It goes from 90 to 99 and then back to 90. So that's why we had 99L develop and then 90L. A lot of people get confused about those numbers. But this one is invest 90L. And as you can see on satellite, it actually does have some taller clouds there. And actually, it does have a nice spin to it. We're going to have to really wait and see what this one does. There's some colder temperatures where it's headed. Uh, also, it's along a cold front. The potential is uh, on the lower side here, but there is a chance that this one develops into a depression or a tropical storm. You know, this year has surprised a lot of people, so I would not be surprised at all uh, if this one just overperforms or does something we're not expecting at all. At this point, it has a 70% chance of development, but that's going to need to happen quite soon before it moves too far to the north. All right, now let's take a look at our spaghetti model guidance, and as you can see based on this screen, it hardly poses any sort of threat to the United States, thankfully, or any land for that matter, unless way later on in the outlook it, you know, does something unexpected, but for now it looks to stay over open water, and that's about it. Uh, we had a storm back, I think, in maybe June or July that was similar to this one, you know, minimal impacts with that one, it really just stayed over water and dissipated. This one kind of reminds me of that. It's very interesting, however, to see how many storms have formed off the East Coast this year. This has got to be the fourth or the fifth if this one develops, which is just out of this world. i uh, never seen anything like that. Let's look at the intensity guidance for this one. As you can see, the models are kind of 50-50, whether it's going to become a tropical storm or kind of just fizzle out and stay, uh, you know, kind of a weaker disturbance. We're going to have to really, really wait and see. But at this point, hurricane seems to be highly unlikely unlikely under 5% chance of hurricane. It seems like this one will be a weak tropical storm, if anything. All right, now what we're going to do is we're going to move on and we're going to take a look at that Invest 99L, which is the Southern Caribbean one. What will that one do? We'll have to wait and see.
Alright, now here we are taking a look at the satellite imagery for Invest 99L. Again, this one was the one that developed first. And it's in that very southern Caribbean. It's just to the north of South America. Uh, it's in those regions, and that's kind of not a good place for a tropical system to be. That's kind of my biggest thing with this one. It's suppressed to the south. There's lots of shear, shear in the area. We're going to need to watch it closely. There's a lot of things that look like it could hinder this one. But again, 2020 is just the year of these systems. Very, very much so overperforming and surprising a lot of people. Uh, we've seen that multiple times this year, so I'm not going to underestimate anything. On satellite, this system actually looks quite nice. Uh, it does have a lot of taller clouds. It's quite organized. Uh, and it does have some spin to it. We'll have to see if that translates into a good area of development over the next 48 hours. Could it become a tropical storm? I would say possibly. I think this one out of the two that I've shown has the highest potential. So we'll have to really wait and see. Let's move on and take a look at our spaghetti models. And as you can see, within the next 48 to 72 hours, it appears as though it will be making contact with Central America. The interesting thing here is, uh, I think if it hits Central America further south there, uh, it's going to have less chance of developing into a tropical storm because it's going to have less time over water. But if you take a look at that HWFI model uh, that takes the purple track, which is the one that goes further north, it stays over water until almost 120 hours. That would give it a much more elevated chance of becoming a named storm. So that's going to be the difference. If it's further south, lesser de uh, development chances. If it's further north, I think it will have more chance of development if it heads more towards the Yucatan Peninsula. I hope that makes sense. Let's look at the intensity guidance for this one, and the potential's a bit higher with this one. As you can see, only about four models show it not becoming a tropical storm. Then we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven showing it become at least a tropical storm. The ship model just goes above and beyond with where it uh, wants this one to go as far as development. I'm sure it has it hitting the, the Yucatan Peninsula, or maybe even going in between Cuba and the Yucatan Peninsula. That would be the only explanation for why it just continues to develop. For right now, that's a major outlier, and the vast majority of models have this one becoming a weak to moderate tropical storm. Nothing much more than that. There is just those few that have us reaching that stronger tropical storm to even hurricane status. Uh, so we're going to need to really keep our eyes open. Uh, but at this point, the, the, the likelihood of something like a hurricane occurring out of this one seems to be on the much, much lower side. All right, now what we're going to do is we're going to move on. We're going to take a look at the overall hurricane season, talk about that MGO phase, talk about our rising and sinking air motion. That's going to play a big role in how this first half of September goes as far as tropical activity. Now, I said it in my last tropical update. I will say it again. Things are not looking as favorable for the early portion of September as they have been for the later portions of July through August. The, it really just does not appear like uh, we're going to have much rising air. Deep sinking air motion, actually, matter of fact. This is starting out from August 31st, which is the time I'm making this video, through September 7th. And as you can see, we are in the reds for basically the entire Atlantic. That's going to, in the reds, or the pinks kind of, the lighter reds, slightly decrease the probability of tropical development. But in those deeper red shades, it's going to vastly decrease that probability of tropical development. Uh, and that's going to play a major role. Let's go ahead and move on. This is really important. September 9th through September 16th, it's the same exact thing. So that takes us through the first half of September. And we still have a sinking air motion. Uh, so the potential for tropical activity is going to be decreased for that first half of September, which is usually the peak of hurricane season. Now, the fact that it is the peak of hurricane season tells me likely, regardless of this, we will have some tropical development. But again, just really uh, decreased probability. And I had a lot of people commenting like, there goes the chances for a hyperactive hurricane season or an above average hurricane season. You might want to rethink that because if the season was to end today, we would already be above average as far as named storms. We have months ahead of us and the chance for Greek names is actually quite high. Considering we're about to likely see Nana out of one of these storms, we're already going to be at the end storm. It's not going to take a lot to get us to that record of named storms. So it's already been so hyperactive and above average that it doesn't really matter what happens from this point forward. We're already going to be seeing a very active season when we look back at this one. All right, now for today's comment of the day, we had our fall forecast, our final fall forecast yesterday, actually. And I asked you guys, what are you most excited for this fall season? And Sharon Tay said, corn maze, bonfire, Halloween, and wearing long sleeve, and so much more. I think a lot of us agree with that. That just gets me so excited for the 
the fall season, corn maze is just a little bit cooler, easier to have a bonfire because you're not getting overheated. Halloween's going to be exciting. And just to get to wear some long sleeve stuff, I love this time of year. I prefer the cold, colder weather, actually, as, much, as most of you probably know by now. Anyway, for our patron highlight of the day, I want to thank you all for supporting the channel, but especially our diamond patrons, Madbirds, Mark J, and then alongside our platinum patron, Donna Carnes. Anyway, guys, thank you so much for watching this video. Again, be sure to stay tuned to the National Hurricane Center and the National Weather Service for life-saving information. That's going to be in the uh, description down below as well, always. Anyway, thank you so much for watching this video. Again, be sure to share it with your friends, family, and social media. I will see you guys in the next video.